What is Web3 all about? Here's an easy explanation with examples. Web3 is seen as the next iteration of the internet. So in this video I want to cut through the hype and explain what it is and look at practical examples as well as the benefits and concerns. Let's start at the beginning. First we had Web1, the first generation of the World Wide Web, which was read-only information companies and governments shared and we consumed. Then was Web2, which emphasized user-generated content. Here, social media apps, blogs, podcasts and video platforms allowed anyone to create and share content online. Now, wherever we look, people are talking about Web3 or sometimes Web3.0, the next big evolutionary leap forward for the internet. But what is it exactly? Web3 is currently a work in progress and isn't exactly defined yet. However, the main principle is that it will be decentralized rather than controlled by governments and corporations as is the case with today's internet. Today, the infrastructure that hosts popular internet sites and apps are owned by corporations and to some extent controlled by regulations set out by governments. With Web3, we have other options, and in particular, we have blockchain technology. Blockchain is a relatively new method of storing data online, which is built around two core concepts of encryption and distributed computing. Encryption means that the data is stored on a blockchain that can only be accessed by people who have permission to do so. And distributed computing means that the file is shared across many computers or servers. Put together, these concepts mean that any data is only ever under the control of the person who owns it, even if it happens to be stored on a server owned by a corporation or subject to government control. Other important concepts that are often used in relation to Web3 are that it is open, trustless and permissionless. Open means it is largely built on open source software. Trustless means interactions and transactions can take place between two parties without the need for any trusted third party. For example, sending bitcoins directly to another person and not via online exchange or wallets. Here the entire transaction is controlled by the blockchain algorithm and there's close to zero chance that anyone can step in and disrupt it. Similarly, permissionless means that you don't have to get permission from a third party such as a service provider or government before an interaction or transaction can take place. So let's look at some actual examples of Web3 in practice. Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency that has been around now for more than 10 years and the protocol itself is decentralized. Sapien, a decentralized social network built on the Ethereum blockchain. Steemit, which is a blockchain-based blogging and social platform. OpenSeas, a marketplace for buying and selling NFTs, which itself is built on the Ethereum blockchain. Uniswap, which is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. And finally, Everledger, a blockchain-based supply chain provenance and authenticity platform. So should we all get ready and excited about Web3? Maybe not, as there are many concerns and criticisms. For a start, there's still a big question to be answered about the lack of control and the potential bypassing of government oversight and regulation. What will that mean for safety and even legality? Governments are starting to create legislation that will allow them to uh, retain some control over communication and interactions on Web3. Then we have Elon Musk who has made several comments including that it seems more like a marketing buzzword than a reality right now and tweeting, has anyone seen Web3? I can't find it. Former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey on the other hand has questioned whether it will be as free and open as many hope. He said, 
you don't own Web3. The VCs and their LPs do. It will never escape their incentives. It's ultimately a centralized entity with a different label. And others have concerns about the blockchain technology underpinning Web3 applications due to the fact that they are very energy intensive, contributing to carbon emissions and climate change. Bitcoin blockchain, for example, is estimated to consume around the same amount of energy as the entire country of Finland. So there are concerns, but there are also big opportunities and it's definitely a space to watch very closely. If you want to stay on top of future tech trends and business trends, then remember to subscribe to my channel or have a look at my books, Business Trends in Practice and Tech Trends in Practice.